So cancer treatment. Once you've got cancer, what can be done about it? A lot, actually. There are some cancers that definitely have a worse prognosis than others, um, but there are a lot of cancers that can be pretty effectively treated these days. So it's, um, it's a pretty exciting time in cancer treatment. So, of course, it depends on the specific cancer, but um, usually it's a combination of surgery, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and radiation. So, um, they uh, have the little graphic representation in the book here, and they are talking about the size of the malignant tumor. So, you get some tumor growth, the signs appear, you get diagnosed, hopefully early, and if you can get um, surgery early enough, that could result in a cure. A lot of times there's surgery followed by radiation and chemotherapy, and that results in a cure, um, which is great. If you have a tumor that resists treatment because it's gone past the stage um, where those early interventions can help, sometimes late treatment, surgery, radiation, and or chemotherapy can slow the spread, um, but the tumor may recur. Um, sometimes it unfortunately results in death. Um, palliative treatments, which are treatments that um, help alleviate the symptoms but don't cure it, are often used um, when it's too late for the other treatments. And we'll talk a little bit about some of those. So with surgery, um, it involves removing the tumor and the surrounding tissue. So sometimes it's done um, laparoscopically with several small incisions to minimize tissue damage. Um, the less tissue damage there is, the better your recovery time is going to be. So if they um, remove, uh, the, depending on what surrounding tissue they remove, it might result in a change in function. So um, if they have to remove muscle tissue, that could uh, alter your function. If they have to re, um, dissect or resect some uh, lymph nodes, that can result in a change in function. So um, that's all going to depend on how much of the surrounding tissue has to be removed. Sometimes they use radiofrequency ablation, which is an alternative to surgery. They use a radio um, frequency to go in and uh, melt the tumor basically. They don't really melt it, but they um, ablate it. They uh, eliminate it with the radio frequency. Radiation therapy, um, it can be, sometimes it's used alone. It can be used in combination with other therapies, and it frequently is. Um, it causes, radiation therapy causes mutations or alterations in the target DNA. So it has to be really targeted to hit just the tumor cells, um, and it's Radiation therapy is considered most effective when you have a tumor with rapidly dividing cells because you're really trying to zap those um, altered DNA cells. Um, some types of cancers are radioresistant, so radi radiation therapy is not effective for them. Um, and sometimes they use the radiation therapy to shrink the tumor before the surgery, so there's just less, less invasiveness that they have to do with the surgery. Um, a lot of times they use a, an external source, a cobalt machine, um, where they do radiation for a short time to a specific site in the body. You have to go frequently for multiple treatments. Um, sometimes they, for um, specific cancers like cervical or oral tumors, they actually insert radioactive material at the tumor site. So um, the uh, external source is probably more common, um, but that for certain tumors they can use the internal insertion. So sometimes they put a radioisotope in a solution um, into a body cavity. So say that you had, um, you had a tumor in your peritoneal cavity, um, they might uh, introduce that radioisotope in a solution um, they want to make sure there's no leakage so it stays in that area. And they might give, be, it might be given by injection for specific tumors. So depending on where the tumor is and what type of tumor, 
um, that will change the approach for the radiation therapy. So cancer treatment is pretty specific for the individual person and their individual type of tumor. So oncologists have to be pretty um, creative and responsive to um, get the right kind of therapy for that individual person. So um, radiation can have a lot of ad adverse effects because um, it's not just altering the cells, the tumor cells, but the cells around it as well. Um, it can depress bone marrow function, so you get um, decreased leukocytes, causing an increased risk of infection. Decreased erythrocytes, causing fatigue and tissue breakdown, because we're not getting oxygen to the tissues. And decreased platelets, causing excessive bleeding. So, um, overall, um, pancytopenia um, so they are constantly monitoring people's blood counts when they're doing radiation therapy because they want to make sure that they're um, not losing too many blood cells, not depressing the bone marrow too much. It can cause um, epithelial cell damage, so um, damage to blood vessels and skin and hair loss. Um, abdominal radiation can potentially cause infertility and um, it can cause non-specific fatigue and lethargy, which can lead to mental depression. Um, understandably so. If you just feel tired and lethargic the whole time, that can really have an adverse effect on your mood. So chemotherapy is um, drug therapy, chemical therapy. Um, they use anti-neoplastic drugs. So chemotherapy, again, just like the other treatments, can be alone used alone or in combination with other with surgery and radiation. It's usually a combination, a cocktail of two to four drugs that are given at periodic intervals. So they have different ones they call antimitotics, which slow down mitosis, antimetabolites, which alter the metabolism of the cancer cells, alkylating agents, which um, do some chemical binding with the cells, and antibiotics. So the drugs interfere with protein synthesis or DNA replication because we're trying to slow down that tumor growth, right? So chemotherapy also has potential adverse effects. Bone marrow depression, just like with radiation, um, that's one of the limiting factors in chemotherapy. They have to really monitor their blood counts closely, um, and they monitor, they look for... Um, what is the point of lowest cell count in the cycle. So the chemotherapy cycle really depends a lot on those blood counts. Um, nausea is a huge adverse effect of chemotherapy. Um, it can occur prior to the treatment, during the treatment, or shortly after the treatment. Um, they have some medications that are really helpful for decreasing nausea. And um, there are there are a lot of different strategies that um, oncologists, and it's usually not just the oncologists, it's a team. Nutritionists, oncologists, um, all sorts of people um, coordinating the treatment to um, ameliorate the adverse effects as much as possible. So you can also get epithelial cell damage, um, hair loss, um, breakdown of skin and mucosa, and damage to specific areas. Um, so some antineoplastic drugs cause fibrosis in the lungs or damage to myocardial cells or kidney damage. So um, the only reason for using those is because the cancer is a life-threatening situation. So it's a really serious treatment with some serious adverse effects, but um, it's better than the alternative, which is death. So other drugs that they might use in chemotherapy are blocking agents to block growth promoters on cancer cells, um, biological response modifiers to um, augment the natural immune response, um, angiogenesis inhibitors to, to inhibit the um, growth of blood vessels around that tumor, and analgesics for pain. A lot of times people are on high dosages of pain medications um, when they're undergoing chemotherapy. So um, patients with advanced cancer are often malnourished because um, the tumor is a resource hog. Um, 
Also, they just like with aging, they get changes in taste sensation, so their appetite reduces. Um, anorexia, vomiting or diarrhea from the treatments, from the nausea, sore mouth or loss of teeth can um, decrease nu um, nutrition, um, pain and fatigue. You're just tired and you're in pain and you don't feel like eating, and um, just nutrient malabsorption caused by inflammation in the digestive tract. So. A lot of times, um, chemotherapy and radiation are accompanied by complementary therapies, including massage, meditation, counseling, exercise, that's where we can come in on that, therapeutic touch, um, certain diets, even though there's not a lot of research-based evidence, a lot of people will follow certain diets with, um, as a complementary therapy with chemotherapy. And um, use of insulin and glucose with chemotherapy. So um, definitely, healthcare workers need to be aware of different types of therapies, just so we can um, advise patients. They, um, we're lucky here in um, Bellingham. We have a really great cancer center, which is right next door to the clinic where I work, where they um, integrate all of these things. Um, they have massage and meditation and yoga and counseling. Um, people will come to our clinic for exercise during their um, cancer therapy. Um, they have um, they have support groups. They have lots of different activities that um, art therapy and things that people can participate in to help um, get the best outcome from their cancer treatment. So I think it's really great that we have that available. There are a lot of other communities that have um, similar setups, and um, I, I think that's a huge um, improvement in cancer treatment, including all the um, different complementary therapies. So for the prognosis is going to vary a lot depending on what type of tumor is and where the tumor is. <clears throat> so, a cancer-free state or remission is usually defined as a five-year survival without recurrence. So, some cancers, such as childhood leukemias, can be considered after a 10-year cancer-free period. Um, remission means they have no clinical signs of cancer. Um, people can go into remission and then have a recurrence and then go into remission and have a recurrence. If you go into remission for five years or ten years with childhood leukemia, then you're considered um, cured, cancer-free. Um, life expectancy and death rates for um, specific cancers vary significantly. There's some that have really good life expectancy and really low death rates, and some that have um, really high death rates. I said earlier pancreatic cancer has a, a just a 10% survival rate. Um, some of them have really improved over the last 20 years or so. Leukemia used to have um, about a 5% survival rate, and now it has about a 90% survival rate, so that's pretty darn good. Um, the types of malignant tumors that are common are um, skin cancer, malignant melanomas, um, and other skin cancers. One of the reasons why they um, are easily diagnosed is because they're visible and they're easier to treat. Most skin cancer has an excellent prognosis with the exception of malignant melanoma because it tends to metastasize. Um, ovarian cancer has a poor prognosis because of the hidden nature of cancer. Um, and it has very high mortality rates. So a lot of times people don't have symptoms until it's progressed way past where anything can be done about it. Um, brain tumors, um, both benign and malignant tumors are life-threatening because it compresses brain tissue. So the primary tum um, tumor is usually fatal and so you don't get any metastasis with it because um, you don't live long enough to get metastasis, unfortunately. So the most common cancers in men are prostate cancer, lung cancer, and colorectal cancer. Um, the most common cancers in women are breast cancer, lung cancer, and colorectal cancer.